Okay, so this is our first tutorial in uh, life cycle costing calculations. So we're uh, going to go through incrementally, um, starting with the basics um, in terms of present value, um, to series calculations in life cycle costing, and then to more kind of modeling um, in terms of life cycle costing and construction costs. But we gotta learn the basics first, um, and we gotta learn the functions first before we, um, before we move forward. So working with this today here, we've got um, a PV calculation, a present value calculation. And this assumes essentially that we need a sum of money in 10 years time, um, and that sum of money is 500 euro. So let's kind of imagine that we need to replace floor finishes in a, in a living room, and it's gonna cost us 500 euro. Now, of course, we won't know exactly what it's going to cost depending on escalation and inflation over a course of a year, but in this particular calculation, let's assume that we do know we need 500 euro. So this is what's called a single present value because it's a single sum of money rather than um, a sum of money that's paid out every year. And we need to calculate the present value cost of that particular sum of money in today's money based on an interest rate of 3%. So we can do it a number of different ways. Um, in Excel, we can use the calculation that we looked at in class, which is one over the power of one plus or, um, or we can use Excel functionality in respect to equals to the power or equals to the PV. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. Um, here is our calculation. We need 500 future value. It's over the course of 10 years, and it's a discount rate of 3%. Now I wanna use Excel so that if any one of those items changed, my calculation will change. Down here, we actually have the explanation of the PV function, so the function in Excel that does this calculation. Um, but of course, we can do it manually as such as Excel as well. And what those different, I suppose, terminology means with respect to making the payment. Because you can use this function for a series of payments, or you can use this function, PV function, for a one-off payment. Okay, so starting with what we did in class in the, in the lecture, which is essentially just this calculation here. Um, we're gonna calculate the PV, the present value of that 500 euro using just this simple calculation here. So let's start with that. So I'm gonna click on the first, and delete what's there. That's just the, gonna show you um, the complete calculation. So when we're starting, um, I suppose, a formula, we always start with equals. So equals, um, and it's one, because I'm looking at what's going on here, one, divided by, open brackets, one plus, and then I'm gonna click the percent. So I is my discount rate, it could be shown as D there, but I is essentially the interest rate. Okay, so one plus B4, I could type B4 in as well. I'm gonna close my brackets, and then it's to the power of, and that is shift six, so this little arrow up above the number six on your keyboard to the power of what, um, maybe I'll use the series of payments down here, click on 10, so it's to the power of 10. Now that is my calculation to calculate my factor, which is my single present value, so I'm gonna put a brackets around um, the last item there, which is the L15, and the first item, to signify that that's one complete calculation, and then that factor, the resultant factor, um, in fact, if I hit return here, I can see that it's 0.74, um, I'm gonna go back up into my calculation and multiply by that 74 by the 500, okay? So you can actually see based on where the cells are located or the color boxes around the cells, what's happening there. So that is essentially that formula in Excel. It's horizontal instead of kind of this vertical representation that you get when you look at it, I suppose, in a textbook. Um, always start with equals and then once you've calculated it, hit return. So we got 372 euro five cents. What does that signify? Well, if I put 372.05 in the bank today at 3%, in 10 years time, I'll have 500 euro. Okay, um, what do I need to put in the bank today to pay for that floor finish at 500 euro um, is essentially 372.05. And that is the time value of money over the course of 10 years that money would grow, or if you reverse it, it would discount. And that's why that's called a discount rate, because it essentially represents what that money represents in uh, 10 years time, discounted back to what's called year zero. Okay, so that's the simple 
single present value calculation. So moving on from that, I'm gonna use this power calculation in Excel. So we're just gonna delete it there, and that is equals, type in to the power. Now when you do that, you get this, um, I suppose, explanation of what the formula does. It results the result of, well, returns the result of a number, uh, number raised to the power, and that's essentially what we're doing here because that's what that is. And it is power open brackets. The number we are looking for is the one plus discount rate, okay? And that is to the power, comma, I'm following what's going on here. So this is this first item here, to the power of, that's what the arrow up N is. So to the power of the 10. So I'm gonna click in the 10. Now in this calculation, if you don't put in minus in front of L15, it won't return the correct figure. So I'm just gonna put minus in L15 there. So it's minus 10 rather than 10. I'm gonna enclose that with a brackets. Okay, um, and then I'm gonna multiply it by the 500. Now let's hope this works. So there we got that calculation equals, open brackets one plus B4 to the power of L15, which is 10, close brackets, multiply it by the 500. And there we have the exact same calculation. If I wanna double click, there's the 3% over the course of 10 years, with the future value of 500 and that gives us the 372. Now again, if I changed, let's say that 4% to a 10% interest rate or discount rate, you can see the effect it has on my two sums, my two calculations. So because I've got an exponentially more or a higher interest rate, I don't have to put as much money in the bank because that's accumulating at a 10% compound rate over the course of 10 years. So if I have a high interest rate, I don't have to put as much money in the bank. So the present value of that money in year zero is less than what it would be at 3%. So I'll go back to 3%. So our last calculation is the actual present value calculation, which is designed for exactly what we need to do um, in Excel. Um, so I'm gonna use it equals. This is it up here in terms of an explanation, but as you type it in, it will explain what it is. Equals PV. Okay, and then this returns, you can see it there, returns the present value of an investment, the total amount that a series of future future payments is worth now. Now, there's two things happening here. You can use this PV as a series of payments or you can use it as a one-off payment, which is essentially what we're using here. So it does two things and you'll see what I mean in a second. So I'm gonna open the brackets. The rate I'm using is 3%. Um, the next one is comma. So you can see it down here, the number of payments, and that is 10. Okay, then I've got comma PMT, which is what I'm on next. Now the PMT is the payments ma made in each period. Because I'm not using the calculation for a series of payments, I'm not gonna use that. So I'm gonna click zero there. And then the next one, which is why I've got it in red here, is the FV, and that is future value or whatever the cash balances that I'm looking for and that is the 500 so I'm gonna click that now when I'm doing this one I also have to put a minus in front I believe a minus in front of the L15 otherwise it'll return uh, an incorrect value so click minus there and then comma and again I'm down here type that type is either a zero or one Type indicates when payments are made. One is payments are made at the beginning of the year and zero is payments are made at the end of the year. I want the end of the year here. So I'm gonna click zero. So we want it to be essentially at the end of the year rather than the start. It'll give us a different, um, I suppose, future value or different present value. And then I'm gonna close my brackets. So that's my series of payments there. And you can see that it's 3% L15 in terms of number of payments or the, 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 the period of payment and then the uh, L17 being the future value. So hopefully if I click return, I get 372 and I do. So that's our first little tutorial. And um, next we'll move on to a tutorial that encompasses escalation. Okay, moving on from our first sheet um, that we did single present value calculations to our next sheet, which is also single present value calculations. Um, but this time we're dealing with escalation. So this gives us an opportunity the cost of today's money, um, 
bring it up to an escalation um, over a period of time at a certain rate, at 2%, um, to 10 years, and then we discount it back. So the main thing is the difference between these two, the 5% interest rate or discount rate and the 2% escalation rate. Um, you'll see what I mean as we go through the calculations. So we're going to start at the start here. There's a number of different ways of doing this. Uh, and just to kind of build your resilience in life cycle costing, I'll show you those different ways. Um, starting with the first, um, I suppose, stage here. This is a two-stage process. So I'm just going to delete what's in there. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to escalate that sum of money first. So in today's money, I've got 500 euro. Um, what you know what it costs basically let's again use the example of floor finishes so in today's money i would replace those floor finishes for 500 euro in let's say a living room um how much would that be in 10 years at, at an escalation rate of two percent so how much will it cost in 10 years if we assume that inflation is escalating at two percent every single year so what we need to do is we're going to use this formula here for compounded interest one plus e inflation um, or escalation to the power of m so let's start with that equals one uh, plus e is the escalation rate put brackets around the end and i'm just going to stick brackets at the start and that is then shift six to the power of n being 10. okay and i'm gonna put brackets around that at the end and at the start and I'm going to multiply it by the sum of money today okay so there's our calculation hit enter so that 500 euro based on escalation rate of 2% is 60950 in 10 years if I change 2% to let's say 5% obviously it goes up because it's escalating at a greater rate I'm not going to do that I'll just change it back to 2 let's just to show you now what I'm going to do is, similar to what I had in the last task or in the last sheet, I've got that 500 euro, I know what it is now, but in this case it's at 609. So I'm going to use that same um, formula to, uh, to do the calculation on the single present value. So again, it's this 1 over 1 plus i to the power of m. So let's start with that. So equals um, 1 divided by 1 plus I being the discount rate, okay, to the power of shift 10 years. Okay, so let's put a brackets around that calculation at the end and at the start to enclose it. And let's multiply it by the, uh, well, 609, because I'm discounting it back from that. Okay, so hit enter and I got 374. So it's a two-stage process, stage one being inflating the 500 euro, the 609.50, if I double click on the formula, I'll see what's happening there. And then the next one is double click, is discounting back that 609 back to a present value cost. So if I put 307 euro in the bank today, I'll be able to pay that floor finish. So what essentially is the present value of 500 euro today at a discount rate of 5% and an escalation rate of 2% is 374. Watch what happens if I change the discount rate and escalation rate to the same. So let me change that 5% to 2% and click enter. I'm right back to where I started. Now that is logical because on 500 euro in today's money, it escalates to 609.50. And if I discount it back at the same rate as I escalated, I'm back to 500. So the relationship between these two is everything in life cycle costing. If I put the escalation rate higher than the discount rate, it will change the dynamic. Discount rate, or sorry, escalation rate goes up significantly more, and I'm back at 2%. And um, so I've actually got a present value cost because the relationship between these two um, is a little bit different than previously. I've got a present value cost that is actually higher than my uh, money today, my cost of money today. So I'm just going to go back a few steps because I want to leave it as is. And that's 374. Okay, continuing on from that. That is kind of a two-stage process. And you might want to do that because you might want to represent those costs in both escalated cost and discounted cost. Um, this is a process um, or one-stage process that is below it. So I'm just going to go down a little bit. 
And here we have a couple of calculations. I'm going to show you two ways of doing this one stage process. Um, it's essentially this single present value factor that encompasses both the escalation and the discount in the one calculation. So you'll see that from, or you'll remember that from our, our classes, our lectures, in terms of the explanation of the formula. If I'm to do it, I'm to do it possibly using this formula manually, or I can use it using the power to the power formula. Okay, so let's try this. I'm just going to delete what's there. And I'm going to use this formula here, this SP factor formula. So equals, and I'm going to start with a one plus E being escalation. Close the brackets. And then divide it by one plus the interest rate brackets on that to start and finish so that encompasses that first bit um, and then I am going to put brackets around the end and the start hopefully you're getting the feel for these formulas and how they work with terms of brackets and the logical sequence of them and then that calculation is to let's hope it works to the power of the 10 years okay so that's our calculation there click enter Oh, 0.75 although what I need to do is that's my factor I need to put brackets around this end and around the start and obviously I need to multiply the 0.75 by the 500 euro okay so there's our calculation I click enter so there's my present value 374.18 but it's within the one calculation where I'm both using my interest rate and my discount rate and my escalation rate so it's escalating and discounting within the same calculation rather than doing it in a two-stage process. As I said, there's another way of doing that using the power functionality. So if I was trying to do that, I could click equals power, open brackets, um, one plus the escalation rate. Okay. Close brackets divided by open brackets one plus the interest rate to the power of 10 years close the brackets at the end the brackets at the start to close the calculation and then multiply it by the 500 so that I suppose formula there, Excel formula, is pretty much the same as what's above. Just done with the power functionality and click enter and you can see it's the same. So again, if I changed 5% discount rate to a 5% escalation rate and have everything linked up, you can see that my present value is the same, same as my today's cost. If I manipulate my escalation, make it 1%, it starts changing. Okay, so my present value is a whole lot less than my um, today's cost of 500 euro. So I'm just going to go back. Just go back a couple of steps here. And there we have back to what was originally my 5% and 2%. And um, so those those first two calculations there, I'm going to move on to another way of doing it where I calculate the real discount rate. And um, again, this is still calculating the single present value of this series of payments, taking into account a discount rate and an escalation rate and the cost of that payment today, or what it would be today. Um, now, calculating the real discount rate of 5% and 2%, so let's say you think that that real discount rate is the discount rate minus the escalation rate, which essentially is 3%, but it doesn't work out that way. Um, if you're to calculate the real present value or real discount rate of that um, relationship, you've got to use this formula here. So one plus I over one plus E, um, minus one okay so let's try that there there's the calculation let's calculate what the relationship between these two uh, rates are equals open brackets one plus i being the discount rate close brackets divided by open brackets one plus e being the escalation rate close brackets then close again the end open again at the start so that's that one calculation 
um, or at least the first bit of the calculation, and then the next bit is minus one. So let's click enter, and that is the factor. Let's change it to a percent, and it's three percent. Bring it back a couple of decimal places. Let's call it 2.94%. So it's not quite the, diff the complete difference, which is two minus five, three percent. It's just below it based in this calculation. So let's pretty much, now that we have the present value rate, um, which is what we were kind of working on here, let's follow that same logic as what we were doing here um, in this calculation, but using the uh, 2.94 rather than the 3%, okay? So again, if we're to do the present value calculation on that, and that was using this calculation, um, we would click equals, um, as far as I remember, one minus brackets, one plus i to the power of, as I remember, n being 10 years. Click enter. Oh, of course, same mistake as I did above. That needs to be enclosed because that's my factor. And then that factor, SPV factor, needs to be multiplied by 500 euro. Okay, so there we go. So we get the actual real present value, which is the relationship between the two, which is 2.94, and then just use our, you know, our single present value calculation that we did in the previous sheet, and we click enter. And there we have it. I'll just bring that back. There we go, and it's the same as above. Just a different way, again, a third way of doing things, not to confuse the matters. Um, I'm going to use the present value calculation here that I used in the previous sheet. So equals PV, open brackets, the rate is 2.94%. Uh, the number of payments is over 10 years. I don't have a payment every year, so I'm going to click zero. I do have a future value as such, and that is 500. Okay. And I'm going to comma zero. And then I'm going to multiply that. Or I think I can actually return that payment. And there it is. Oh, it's giving me the, the, the minus 374. Um, but that was because that uh, G24 needs to be a minus figure, as far as I remember. Okay, there we go. And it's the same. Okay, so that's again using that present value calculation, um, similar to what I had done on this one here. Okay, and you can see the minus that should have been in there. Um, again, minus G24. Okay, so click enter. What I might do is that's coming up as pound. I might just copy paint, click that there so it's the same. So they're all the same and they should be. They're just different ways of calculating. And then the last one. Yeah, and the last one here is using the power function, again, with the real discount rate. So I'm just going to delete what's there. Equals power. Open brackets. 1 plus 2.94. Close brackets, I believe. To the power of the 10. But I think it's going to be minus and close those brackets. I need to get rid of that bracket there. There we go. So one plus b twenty seven to the power of twenty four, and then that's my calculation multiplied by the five hundred euro. And click return. Just as a few more decimal places there, bring them back in. And there we go. There's the three different ways of doing those calculations based on the real discount rate. So that's our tutorial for this week. Um, shows us both the single present value and there's no escalation rate as such and the single present value on one-off payment when there is escalation rates. And again, I've showed you quite a few different ways of doing it. You won't be necessarily using all those um, when you're doing a total life cycle cost um, model, for example. Um, but it's worthwhile knowing how those things or those calculations are being put together. Thank you very much.